Good morning, everyone. Preventing gestational diabetes with natural remedies is the topic we are going to talk with Dr. Juliet Margaret. Dr. Margaret is a traditional naturopath. She is skilled in several healing modalities such as nutrition therapy, reflexology, mental health counseling, aromatherapy, and so on and so forth. She is going to be joining us live from New York. I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a global platform for natural holistic integrative therapies. I'd like to introduce all of you to Dr. Juliet Margaret. Welcome Dr. Juliet. Thank you. How are you this morning and how's everyone this morning? Great, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to join and, and educate all the pregnant women, uh, you know, who have gestational diabetes. So I really want to thank, uh, thank you for that. Oh, you're quite welcome. All right, we can get started if you like. Sure. Um, well, as you all know, uh, the topic today is going to be all you need to know about gestational diabetes. Uh, the presentation is uh, about symptoms, causes, nutrition, treatments, and prevention. Uh, gestational diabetes is a condition which develops during pregnancy. Approximately 10% of women in the United States are stricken with the disease when having children. How does it occur? Diabetes usually starts at, um, you know, uh, after three months of pregnancy, and it occurs when the body does not create an adequate amount of insulin. Gestational diabetes presents itself when the placenta hormones cause high blood sugar levels. Now, in order to prevent that, many times we have to, um, you know, be a little bit more aware of our diet. So. Just um, giving you a little background, um, one in six women who are pregnant usually are affected by gestational diabetes. Okay, what are some, somebody might be saying, what are the symptoms of gestational diabetes? Well, gestational diabetes uh, usually starts off when um, people begin experiencing uh, more of, of a frequency of urination. The tummy looks larger. Um, there's a bit of nausea, there is vomiting, uh, fatigue, um, sometimes weakness, and um, in really uh, chronic cases, you might find there's an infection in the bladder, the vagina, and the skin. Uh, many times there are like rashes or irritated areas. Normally there are no visible signs, but, um, and some people really never know that they have gestational diabetes until maybe they go to their doctors for a checkup. Other symptoms would include fatigue, thirst, excessive hunger, blurred vision, uh, and um, as I said before, frequent urination. Okay, how does one determine if they have diabetes, especially when pregnant, gestational diabetes? Um, first of all, uh, you can take a test. Um, at times, some blood tests will uh, determine that factor. Uh, for pregnant women, um, their blood sugar testing usually makes uh, an affirmative diagnosis that they have gestational diabetes. At that point, the pregnant woman may be placed on a special diet or exercise regimen. Um, and she may also be encouraged to um, be on a strict diet and to consume more proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Should I move on to the next slide? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. How does one confirm the gestational diabetes um, after having symptoms? If your blood sugar level is higher than 140 milligrams, after one hour of the test, your doctor will recommend the three hour test. When you take the three hour test, if your blood glucose level is higher than 190 milligrams after one hour, another one hour test, you will be most certainly diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Nutrition plays a very important part with gestational diabetes. Um, foods such as whole grain breads, cereals, oranges, grapes, and broccoli may be introduced into the diet to regulate blood sugar levels. Um, other foods such as fenugreek, aloe vera, olive oil, bitter lemon, red onions are crucial with regard to regulate, regulating and managing insulin. 
Um, some foods that I would basically recommend would be um, bok choy, broc uh, broccoli we just said, Brussels sprouts, um, eggplant is very good. It's uh, filled with a lot of uh, nutrients and minerals. Um, kale, leek, lettuce, uh, mushroom, okra, onions, and peppers. Um, as far as meats are concerned, I would not really recommend a lot of or, um, or, organic, not organic meats, but meats uh, from you know, animals. I would uh, stick with fish, um, a lean chicken, and um, you know, if you're gonna have meat to make it as, as fat-free as possible. Um, some carbohydrates that I would highly recommend would, would be cornmeal, oats, parsnip, plantains, potatoes, and quinoa. So you also want to talk about the build your plate or should we move on? Like the, you know, you have uh, here the step one, step two, step three. Right. Um, well, I, I mentioned uh, some of the foods that should be included. And okay. as I said, as building your plate, you would want to include, um, you know, asparagus, um, cauliflower, most of anything from the, veg the vegetable group, you would really want to include in your plate as many vegetables as possible. Um, as far as carbohydrates are concerned, um, I really would not recommend white rice. I would stick with brown rice, um, corn, uh, farro, and, and squash. Right now is a great time to buy seasonal vegetables. Um, and there are so many different varieties of squash that are available. They're, they're highly um, filled with fiber and provide a lot of vitamins, especially for someone who has diabetes. Um, in the other food group, I would definitely suggest um, beans, eggs, um, a lot of seafood if possible, if, the, if some people can tolerate it because there are in, uh, people that do have allergies to seafood. And uh, tofu is actually a very good substitute for meat um, if, you're, if you're more inclined to be uh, a vegetarian or on the vegan side. Okay. Okay, what are the risks? A lot of people are concerned, especially um, you know family members or even the pregnant person herself about um, the risk factors of gestational diabetes. Women, um, who give birth to large babies and have had prior C-sections are said to have more of a predisposition for gestational diabetes. Um, at times when the infants are born, um, they develop uh, the, uh, respiratory issues and experience jaundice. If the pregnant woman does not take care of herself, she will develop uh, preeclampsia, which is basically high blood pressure and um, it's a buildup of uh, protein in the urine. So that is definitely something to pay attention to. Um, and that has a lot to do with diet, monitoring um, food portions, and um, just basically um, t you know, keeping apprised of what's going on with your body on a daily basis. Women over 30 years old um, tend to have gestational diabetes. So, um, you know, you'll find that uh, there are women who may get pregnant in their 40s and, um, you know, they're definitely would be considered borderline where they may, may or may not develop um, the disorder. Also, obesity is a, definitely a major uh, issue. And that is, uh, you know, having too much weight. And um, so, therefore, it, it would have to do with, uh, if you look on the chart, it would tell you what you should be for your height and weight really do not want to go, you know, that much over it, because then you'll end up having a problem, um, you know, with regulating your insulin and so forth. Um, genetics, uh, ancestry and hereditary does play a, a major factor. If you have one or both family members who have um, diabetes, perhaps type two or type one, um, there's def uh, definitely a chance that you will develop it when you become pregnant. Um, also, uh, individuals who've had prior pregnancies that during those pregnancies, they develop gestational diabetes, that would also be a precipitating factor for them to have that as well. Um, pregnant women, I cannot stress enough that pregnant women have to pay special attention to their health, especially if they know they have all these, um, uh, the genetics is not on their side, and if they've had previous pregnancies and um, you know, and, and if they haven't been well, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, on a, a normal basis, then they definitely should pay attention to their dental care, foot care, and skin care. 
Okay. Um, as I we said before, we've been talking about diet, and I'm a, a really big fan of, um, you know, eating nutritious foods. Um, I don't really believe in diet. I, I believe if you eat the correct foods and try to make your plate as colorful as possible, you can avoid many illnesses that will come along the way. As far as a woman who has a pregnancy, which is developed into gestational diabetes, I think she needs to be on a strict diet. She has to watch her caloric intake, uh, she has to watch her portions, um, to be mindful of sugar consumption, um, to sort of double up on her vitamin C and E because those vitamins help to prevent preeclampsia. Um, also not having a lot of salt and anything that would uh, elevate the uh, high blood pressure. Okay, statistics have shown that um, many children develop and suffer from obesity as a result of not having, um, of a parent of being born with gestational diabetes, especially when one parent has gestational diabetes. So therefore, once they are born, um, the parents have, or the mother especially has to pay attention to their diet. She has to make sure that they um, consume healthy, nutritious foods with nutrients, um, uh, cut out the sugars, and to monitor them carefully so that as they get older, they will not develop um, full-blown diabetes. Um, having a disposition to diabetes requires being more aware of your meals and also um, staying on top of regulating blood sugar levels. Um, at times, uh, one may go to their doctor and they may ask for um, you know, uh, glucose monitoring um, apparatuses that can help them to know when their blood sugar is dropping or if, if it's accelerating too much as well. Okay. One of the other things that I'm very passionate about is um, exercising, if you're able to. Um, for some people, fatigue takes over, or if they're not in the right uh, mind frame, they may not want to exercise, but it is important in just about every aspect of life, especially um, to maintain wellness and health. Um, the two uh, exercises that I really promote that I feel do not really cause the body um, major issues is uh, Pilates and walking and if possible yoga. Yoga is very good, um, because, especially Bikram yoga because it helps to create harmony with money, uh, mind, body and spirit. And it also helps to balance the hormone and sugar levels. So once the woman del del delivers the baby, the blood sugar um, usually resumes to normal and um, uh, she goes back to having a sort of um, normal health. Uh, usually there are not many issues, uh, especially ones being monitored by her physician. Um, however, there is a possibility that if she doesn't continue with eating properly, that she may develop type 2 diabetes after childbirth. Okay, supplements. The, uh, the, this is also, and especially as a naturopath, um, supplements I find are extremely important to supplementing um, nutrition because with our daily lives that we're living, it's so fast paced. And to be truthful, not all the times do we get to sit down and have a very well balanced meal. So this is when we rely on supplements to sort of um, fill, fill in the deficient areas. Some pregnant women may like to take um, insulin injections. Um, I, I'm not really uh, a fan of it if you do not have to, because I think that you can control your blood sugar levels and regulate, regulate them by eating properly. So some non-invasive methods of treatment that I think that supplements are highly um, recommended would be um, alpha lipoic acid, uh, chrom chromium, which is very uh, well known for regulating uh, both type one and type two diabetes. So colonate is also very helpful and L-glutamine with taurine may help in regards to controlling the blood sugar levels, improving insulin efficiency and the reduction of sugar cravings because that is a, a key component because that is where some uh, uh, people pregnant and not pregnant who have diabetes tend to go wrong because once you start having the cravings, it's kind of hard to control your appetite. And that is when overeating happens and portion control becomes a bit of a concern. 
Um, B vitamins may also be recommended in order to improve the metabolization of glucose in the body. Teas made of juniper and huckleberry are very effective in lowering glucose levels and uh, facilitating insulin production. Another, um, it's actually a herb that I also recommend that I, I like is um, also licorice. licorice. If you can have it um, in tea form or even tincture form, um, that is really very good. It is well known for um, regulating insulin and controlling diabetes on a whole. How do you prevent gestational diabetes? Okay, gestational diabetes um, is preventable. Uh, as I said, if you watch your diet, if you exercise, and um, I highly recommend having regular checkups, um, you know, to make sure that um, your sugar levels are not out of control and that all your other levels of high blood pressure are being maintained. Uh, women who are below 45 years of age uh, during pregnancy normally do not develop um, gestational diabetes. So um, definitely considering having children before 45 years would not put you in a high risk category for getting gestational diabetes. Also, um, special attention has to be paid to weight. So um, there are many charts out there that you can get that will tell you uh, if you're within a specific age group, what you should be weighing, and it goes according to your height, um, your weight, your body mass, etc. cetera. Um, remaining physically active and, um, and, and controlling um, the activities that you do um, certainly um, would increase your wellness as far as gestational diabetes. I personally do not recommend um, aggressive exercises because a lot of times one is prone to having more injuries. Um, as I said before, I like yoga. Um, swimming is an excellent form of exercise if you're able to do that. Um, uh, and also uh, walking, brisk walking is good. Um, so definitely, you know, keeping active goes a long way in controlling blood sugar keeping health and um, just maintaining a general sense of well-being. Um, hypertension management is also important because when we get into the matter of hypertension, there's so many different things that can occur. Um, if one doesn't watch their blood pressure, you can develop um, uh, kidney disorders. Um, it also can affect your liver. It can affect your vital organs. So one does not want to have to think about that when um, you know pregnant, you have all these other issues going on than uh, putting gestational diabetes on your plate plus other organs acting up as a result of not being mindful about your diet and exercise. Um, cholesterol levels also have to be you know managed. Um, hypo, every, um, everyone knows by now that high cholesterol levels um, added with hypertension can certainly lead to strokes and other issues in the case of someone who is, um, has a tendency or predisposition to gestational diabetes, this individual could end up with um, uh, preeclampsia, which can um, put the mother's life at risk as well as the, the, the young uh, fetus at risk as well. Um, one wants to uh, stabilize any vascular disease that they have because um, this is another disorder that will at some point show up if the gestational diabetes um, gets out of control. And vascular disease has to do, you know, with the arteries and veins in the body taking blood to the heart. Um, and you also want to be mindful to clear up hormonal issues or if you have uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, which in itself is a, probably another uh, webinar because that has so many um, components of how it starts. Um, and it probably starts when a woman first starts menstruating, she'll realize that she has um, uh, painful uh, uh, menses and, um, and if it's uh, a lot of bleeding that goes on, um, sometimes she'll find out that she has uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. And that's all we have for today? Right, that's uh, the conclusion of our um, webinar or discussion. Okay. Um, I would appreciate if anyone has questions, I would love to answer them. Sure, sure. People who are on Zoom, um, uh, you're welcome to ask questions. You can put them um, in the chat window or, uh, or in the question window. And we've put our email here. We put our website also here uh, just in case, but, but we are open for questions. So um, 
this is uh, actually an odd time, right? It's uh, like a most of the people are working. So so we had someone, I think, uh, what I was going to ask you is that, so a gestational diabetes, in your opinion, um, be, uh, a woman doesn't have to take insulin, right? That's what you are recommending. Um, she does you, not have to take insulin, um, providing that she is within um, the guidelines that it, I mean, she's not having severe symptoms. If her symptoms are yeah. severe, then sometimes her physician will put her on insulin. Um, just to make sure, but I personally, um, being a, a natural health practitioner, I do not recommend insulin. I really try to um, regulate um, hormones and um, blood sugar and glucose levels by eating properly. Um, paying portions are very important because yeah. when one's pregnant, you have a tendency to overeat because you have these cravings going on, these hormones raging. So once I find that if you eat more vegetables because they're filled with fiber, that tends to fill you up more, um, you're more inclined to um, stay within your limits. So you're not really experiencing the more exaggerated symptoms of diabetes. So you would recommend, of course, a balanced diet, which you emphasize a lot during the presentation, then exercise, yoga, and, and there's some uh, supplements like licorice and some of the other things that you mentioned. So balance of all that is, is what- Right, right. I do recommend, um, I, I, I can't stress enough that I, I do recommend before even going to the supplements, it is all about um, making sure you eat a lot of vegetables. You eat spinach, okay. um, kale, uh, blueberry, you know, a lot of fruits especially. Um, uh, papaya, um, uh, bok choy. I, I, I actually have a penchant for bok choy because it's filled with vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Yeah. Um, I also like uh, um, kale. Kale is another one that's packed with a lot of vitamins and minerals. So, if, yeah. you know, and but there are people that are not fond of vegetables. And, yeah. and if, you can't, if you can't cook it, then I say at least try to juice it and, and, and take it. Um, in, you know, as a juice or a smoothie, in whatever form you're able to tolerate it. Um, and, and, and certainly um, meat becomes important, especially right now when we're going through this COVID. Um, I don't really, rec I'm, I'm not a fan of red meat, but I do know that there's some people who are more towards the, par the part of being um, anemic. Yeah. So, they, so they do require some sort of meat. And then I would recommend lean meat. Um, and preferably not organ meats um, from, you know, like wild, wild animals um, yeah. type of meat. I, I recommend um, like lamb is good if you want to have meat. Um, mutton is actually very good. It's good for convalescing, um, especially during pregnancy. Um, and it, it's packed with a lot of, of minerals and nutrients. Um, and, and fish, like I said, if you don't have um, allergies to shellfish, then um, definitely um, incorporate that maybe in salads like avocado, spinach um, with shrimp is, is excellent. You know, but diet is very important. And then once you have the diet um, to a point where it it's natural to you, I definitely suggest then um, the supplements. Um, okay. a, lot of, a lot of women say they feel very tired when they're pregnant. So if, they're, if they've been taking um, prenatal vitamins and yeah. it's working for them, that's good. Um, they may want to check with their physician to maybe add um, other vitamins, like the ones like alpha lipoic, which I suggested. Um, chromium yeah. is widely known for diabetes. So, and that really, if you take that um, adequately, that normally um, controls diabetes, whether gestational or regular diabetes at times. You know, so uh, a lot of people don't have to take insulin if they are good at taking their vitamins and taking the right amount of um, milligrams that are required to keep it under control. You mentioned chromium? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yes. That, yeah, okay. Uh, chromium is very, is excellent um, for gestational diabetes and for individuals who might be um, experiencing type two diabetes. I know that um, type one diabetes is a little bit different because a lot of people are normally, um, they, some of them are born with it. Uh, some of them uh, do develop it later in life. They're rare individuals who do. And that type one does require insulin to a certain point. But I also believe um, if you start from the inception of your diagnosis, 
with diet, exercise, supplements, um, and um, being mindful that I think that you can control it without um, really relying on insulin. No, that's, I think that's, that's excellent, excellent advice, what you're, what you're saying that, you know, stay away from insulin, because that it could also affect the baby, right? The, the, you Absolutely. know, you don't, right, you don't know the right. side effects that could have because you have a baby inside your stomach now and tummy and you don't know what insulin is going to do. You're introducing, it's very, it talks, a lot of these um, things that we introduce to our bodies is, is very toxic. So you really do not want to, I mean, personally, I feel that when one is pregnant um, and, and you're at risk with gestational diabetes, you don't really want to introduce anything into the body that yeah. is going to affect the, the, the health of the baby. You know, exactly. so you want to keep it as natural as possible. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is yesterday we had um, uh, another speaker who was talking about how kids who are being born, there's so much high rate of now ADHD, autism, you know, diabetes, and, and so many other chronic conditions that were not exist, non-existent 20 years back. And now there is so, you know, there's like a curve that's have been going up with all these chronic conditions. So, you know, a lot of things are dependent, of course, gestational diabetes being one of them, but but how the mom is eating uh, and taking medication, exactly. right? That that's resulting into all the increased uh, chronic conditions in the babies that are being born or maybe later on. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a concern. Um, I did a bit of research on children with um, uh, ADHD and ADD. Okay. And um, of pregnancy, the condition of the mother during pregnancy is a very big issue with that. The diet yeah. is a very big issue um, because a lot of these kids, um, what ADHD, it's really attention deficit disorder. And if um, the right foods have not been introduced when they were young and even the well-being, um, meaning like the mother's not under stress, she's yeah. not um, worried, nervous, um, or having any kind of mental aberrations, um, yeah. all that is passed on to the, to the baby. So yeah. um, those, all those issues need to be considered, um, you know, when in a state of pregnancy and, yeah. and, and you can control it with diet. I, I am a firm believer of that. Um, you know, uh, there are teas. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of teas as well. Um, you know, mothers taking, you know, they say chamomile is very good for children who have a predisposition towards um, ADHD. So okay. having, you know, like maybe a few cups of tea while pregnant um, if you're able to tolerate it, because there are cer certain herbs that you do have to be careful about because they can also be toxic. And if you do have them, you don't want to have too much because they can certainly, you know, harm the unborn child as well. Sure, sure. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us. Really appreciate that. I think we would love to have you come back and, and maybe okay. have sessions, sessions at a time, um, you know, like when other people, uh, live audience can join typically in the late afternoon so um we, we would love for you to come back and at least help some of the other women who are going through gestational diabetes and maybe they have some live questions um so so thank you so much thank you amita um thank you everyone appreciate it um it was a, a great experience thank you Thank you so much. And this is being telecast live. So a lot of people would watch it, um, you know, during the next few days. And if there are any questions, please feel free to reach, uh, reach out to us. With that, oh. thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you, Amita. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.